Hey guys, Ray here, welcome to the channel. So today we are going to be wiring up this FlexBoss 21 to my main house electrical panel. We're gonna be doing this the easiest way possible. We have, I think this is $15 in wire and we have about 30 minutes and I think we can do it. So also if you have a main electrical panel and a critical loads sub panel that's a little bit smaller, this could be a really good way to wire this unit into your house. So let's go ahead and try it out. Let's get started. Okay guys, so this should work for any hybrid inverter from EG4. So when I say hybrid inverter, I mean an inverter that can backfeed into the grid. Now I don't have a permit to backfeed, so I'm not gonna be backfeeding any power into the grid, but I am gonna be using that feature or functionality in order to wire into my main electrical panel. And it's gonna make it so much easier than a typical uh, off-grid inverter. So on EG4's website, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can wire these inverters into running your house. There's good, better, best. Now, unfortunately, the best options are the most complicated options. So this option that we're gonna be doing here today, it's still good. It still will be able to save me money on my power bill and provide power to me to my critical appliances when the power goes out. Okay, let's start with the most basic setup and we will go from there. So this basic setup here that we're gonna have is just a handful of wires, no battery, and that's it. I'll show you what we got here. You can probably hear some fireworks going off in the background. It is the 3rd of July. They are shooting them off one day early. <laughs> okay, I'll show you what we got here. So this is the FlexBoss 21, so it can output right around 12,000 watts. And I have wired in the grid connection. So you just have a ground here to connect all the metal together. And then I have a neutral and uh, two hot legs from my grid. Now the grid can come in here and power this unit, turn the inverter on, but because this is a hybrid inverter, it can send power out the load, it can also send power back through the grid to back feed. Now I have this wired up here, over here, and it goes into my electrical panel. I got my ground that came in here that's connected to my ground bar. I've got my neutral, and that's just connected to my large neutral bar in the back. And then the two hot legs come up here to this 60 amp uh, double pole breaker at the top of my electrical panel. Now this is four gauge wire to match the uh, 60 amp breaker here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this on. And that should send grid power in here. And you notice it's turning on right now. So you might be wondering, you know, how is it gonna create any power for me because uh, it's not connected to the battery, it's not connected to the solar. So this is assuming you have a solar array. Now a solar array doesn't have to be complicated. Earlier, I just had some solar panels just sitting up against my fence and I had them up there for a year and it worked great. So I do have some solar ar arrays in my backyard and I'm gonna run them into the uh, solar connections here. Now the beauty of a hybrid inverter is once I have solar connected to this, it can send power out the grid port here and then into my electrical panel. Now it will actually backfeed into the grid right now unless I use one of these. These are CTs or current transformers. Now I am going to clip these right where my uh, grid comes into my electrical meter here. And that will ensure that no power is going out into the grid, it'll monitor that. Now I actually wasn't 100% sure that this was going to work, so I wired it up a few days ago. It's been running for a few days. I just took it down so I can uh, do it again for you, so I can show you exactly what I did with the settings and how I connected this. But yeah, this breaker that feeds the Flex Boss here, uh, that does not need to be at the bottom of the panel. I thought it did originally, and it would just send power up and then uh, distribute power to all of the different circuits in my house. But uh, yeah, it could be anywhere, as long as your CTs are between uh, your main panel and your uh, city meter, which is gonna be right there for me. 
And yeah, so uh, this flex boss will send power into the breaker, or really I should say it's ready to send power in. So if I have it connected here, and I have a load here, like my air conditioner down here, that turns on, this will notice that it needs power and it'll uh, you know, send power in here to power my air conditioner, which would be at the bottom. And yeah, that uh, breaker, you know, I don't think it has to be at the top. I believe it could be at the bottom. You guys could correct me if you think I'm wrong on that, but it's working great for me at the top. So before I hook the CTs up and the solar up to this, I just turned it on and I went into some settings here. I'll show you the settings I made. So EG4 helped me make these changes. The changes they had me make was I needed to disable both of these. Now, uh, I'm not really sure this has a lot to do with uh, my specific setup, but they did say these cause some problems if they're enabled. Um, I selected no battery from the battery type. And then in this setting, I uh, enabled this setting for no batteries. So on the grid sailback setting, I also disabled that. Now, because this is a hybrid inverter and if a load turns off really fast, uh, it can't guarantee that it's not gonna backfeed. And I don't have a permit to backfeed. So they do have this extra setting here. So if you wanna just be extra stringent about not backfeeding, you can go ahead and en enable this and it'll quickly, more quickly shut off any power that would be going out to the grid. And I've used these settings before and had it running all day and I've noticed uh, my meter has no uh, power going back into uh, the grid, at least none that I can visibly see on my meter that I have. So then after I turned off power to everything, I was able to plug my solar panels in here and then I have my CT monitors and I plug it right here. And then I plug my two CT monitors in right there. I'm not going to get super close to this because it's live. So I'm going to step back and then I just turned it on just like that. And this is everything in action. So here is my house. It is running my air conditioner and a bunch of other loads. It's about 5,000 watts coming in. And you notice I do have some grid coming in to help run the loads, but my solar is also coming in to help run the loads as well. Now, if I had a lighter load, now when my air conditioner would turn off, say my house is only using 1000 watts of power, what would happen is it will only accept 1000 watts of solar coming in and it won't need any power from the grid. But I could easily add a battery to this and then it will power my house with 1000 watts and then the rest would just go right into the battery. With the no battery configuration, it makes a lot more sense just to use as much power while the sun is out, you know, plug in your electric vehicle, charge it while the sun's out or cool or turn on your air conditioner all day long while your sun's out. So here's a little diagram of this configuration I downloaded from EG4's website and I'll put these available for download on my site as well on, on the in the description of the video but uh yeah this really isn't like this this weeder really just goes right in the top to be a little more accurate but yeah very simple low initial cost and you can add storage later now one of the biggest downsides of this setup here is if the grid goes down you do not have power to your house so if ever your grid goes down, this has what's called anti-islanding. So it won't backfeed into the grid to keep the linemen safe if they're working on the power lines. And that is where you have your critical loads sub panel. So you can add your critical load sub panel, connect it to the load port in your flex boss. And if the power goes out in this situation, you will not have power to your main loads but you will have power to all of your critical loads in your house. So the nice thing about this is only the critical loads will be using power. So in, the power, in a power down situation, hopefully in theory, your battery will last longer. But when the power is on, you are still running your house and saving money on your power bill, and you still have power when the power goes out right here. 
additionally, you can set up your time of use settings with this configuration. So when the power is really cheap, you can ensure you can uh, send tons of power and charge your batteries. And then when the power is expensive, you can draw from your batteries. You don't even need your solar panels if you don't want. They're totally optional for this setup. Very nice when you don't want to sell back to the grid at all, because a lot of places, especially in California, you don't get hardly any power. You don't get hardly any credits when you're selling back to the grid anyways. So it is one in the morning here, guys. So I got to be wrapping this thing up. But uh, yeah, they do. I will put this uh, links of these diagrams in the description of the video and uh, the various different configurations. And they also have, I'll put these, uh, there's one line diagrams of these various configurations as well. If you're wanting to get your system permitted by the city, they'll want one of these. Yeah, hopefully this gives you guys some different ideas on how to wire this up. Yeah, this one is, this way is super easy. And I have discount codes to various uh, distributors of the equipment that you see behind me. And uh, if you want to make sure that I do get credit for the sale, you will need to uh, clear your cash because a lot of people have emailed me and uh, they say I use, they use my discount code. But uh, yeah, you have to clear your cash if you want to make sure that, uh, you know, I get credit for the sale. Yeah, shoot me an email with your order number if you end up ordering anything and feel free to ask shoot me an email ask me any questions on your build i'm uh, happy to give you know a second opinion but uh but i think this is a pretty good setup if you want to see the uh, best setup in my opinion i will include a link to uh wiring a bypass switch and i'll include that in uh, this video here um thanks a lot guys we will talk to you later <laughs> bye